Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Beth Ellicott. And you're listening to the midweek version of Fiverr Talk, the twice-weekly podcast for needlework artists. Holy smokes, we weren't supposed to be gone this long. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, you know, when your computer <laughs> has yeah. issues. Hey, to the two listeners who are still with us, thanks for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, it was well I the battery was going bad on the laptop. Let's see I have a laptop for those who haven't picked up on it in the past. I have a laptop that is dedicated toward um recording the live shows and podcasts. And so everything's set up on it. It's all hooked up, all the software, the whole bit bit. And so that way I don't have to mess with my main working machine and I know everything is in order. And it stays that way for the most part. But and, and the battery had gone bad. I knew the battery was bad, but it worked fine off of power, and it's been that way for a couple months. And I thought, well, over our Christmas break, I'm going to take it in and get this battery replaced because I knew that it had to get replaced. And so I take it in, and, well, the battery definitely needs to be replaced, but it's also swollen, and it's was affecting my keyboard and my trackpad and the you know, the case all around because these little uh, Apple laptops don't have any room in them anyway. So, okay, that's fine. Can you fix it? Yeah, we can fix it. Um, it's 200 bucks, and you'll have it back in three to four days. Oh, perfect. Exactly, you know? Yeah, great. Uh, so, okay, send it in. Let's go. And then the, the four days pass, and there's, uh, and, and there's a, you know, you have access to, so you can track, your computer repair. Nothing was happening. And so I start calling, you know, what's going on here? Because the guy warned me, he said, these, uh, Mark and I both bought uh, laptops about the same time. And it was a, in 15 or 16, but uh, Apple did not have a good year with that model. And um, he said, you know, we don't have a lot of parts left for these machines. And so it, it may come back that they don't have the parts particularly if something breaks if when they take stuff out. And, okay, fair enough. And so I knew what machine I was going to buy to replace it. Well, not happy, but, you know, if I had to. Right. And then, uh, and where is this thing? So I start checking. It turns out he said I'd have it back in four days. The repair is three to five days from the time the repair shop receives it. Oh. That's a bit of a difference. Yes. Yes. And so I'm raising the alarm, and finally I get this very helpful lady at uh, the Apple main customer service, blah, blah, blah. And she does some research, and she says, well, it's three to five days from the day they receive it, so we're still within the window. And she said, and uh, uh, the files we see, it's on schedule to be repaired and back to you um, appropriately. I said, oh, well, that's kind of different. So I said, you know, I, all right, I'll be patient uh, because, you know, I thought I'd have it back in three to four days. That's what he said. Well, she said, he's wrong. And she said, I called the store on your behalf to check on it. I mean, she really went all out. And uh, she said, they, they don't have the right information at that store. And uh, she wasn't real happy with the store <laughs> in general. <laughs> she said, they gave you bad information, and uh, this thing is on track to uh, be done in the time frame that uh, is standard, and you'll have it back. But she said it will be done in the three to five days and then expect a day or two to have it shipped back. Well, okay, it, you know, if that's, that's the way it is, that's the way it is. You know, I could live with that. Wish I'd known that up front, you know. And sure enough, it showed up right on time. And then uh, I got the bonus of we had to replace the guts, all of it. And so that meant the machine I got back was a brand, essentially a brand new machine, uh, except for the display, but I don't use the display anyway, so I didn't care. And, uh, uh, but then that means I had to load my backup. And that's fine, too. I mean, I have backup uh, on a drive you know, attached to the machine, and I have backup. Uh, off-site. I pay for a, a, a cloud backup because if the house burns down, your machine's in it and your backup's in it, <laughs> you don't have a backup. Um, so that was fine. Okay, so then, all right, I'll load that in. 
And but I knew I knew it was shot, so I got it what last Friday, but and, and it took literally. I started Saturday morning on the thing, and uh, or I get Thursday. I don't know when I got it, but anyway, it started Saturday morning on the thing, and what you and I tested Saturday evening, right, to see if it was working. I mean, it, and I worked at it all day long. I mean, and, and worked at it. You know, a lot of it is just hit enter and then let the machine churn for a couple of hours and. Um, and there, I, I find that stuff terribly tedious, and it just drives me out of my mind. <laughs> I would have been like, livid by yep. the time I was done. Oh. Yeah, it uh, it gets old. I mean, I, I had uh, needlework and football to watch, so it was you know right here, yeah. so I didn't get real frustrated. But it's all the little things. Yvette Stanton posted on uh, one of my posts that uh, she'd been through the same thing recently. Because, yeah, you get all the software back in, all your data, but then it's all the setup things. That's what sucks up the hours. And, uh, like, all the little settings that have to get replaced for recording podcasts. And uh, you know, it's, it's all got to get put back because it doesn't get saved. And, um, yeah, that took forever. So, yep. Wow. Anyway, we're back in action. All is uh, in order. It's That's been good. behaving, so, yay. <laughs> yay. Yay. I mean, and, and you have and you have basically have a new machine, which right. is yeah. just perfect yep. for the price of a battery, Yeah, which you can't beat. Right. And this, I mean, this machine is, what, five years old, which is pretty much the lifespan of a, of a laptop. So I just basically got five more years of a uh, laptop. And, uh, yay. I'll take that any time. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, from the podcast production end of things, it was just getting really frustrating because, you know, we we get people in the habit of expecting things and they're not showing up. It's just right. Yeah. So anyway, we're back in action. Um, so thanks to everyone for their patience. The two of you who hung in there. Appreciate it. And uh, tell your friends to get the rest of them back. No. <laughs> right. Uh Okay, now we're we're starting. It's January, so we're starting our new schedule, which we were going to start, but then didn't get started. So we're on our new schedule, which is um, uh, midweek chats, this uh, podcast on the first and third Wednesdays, and then Stitch Hours, the live show on the second and fourth Wednesdays. So we have two midweek chats and then two live shows in a given month, a typical four Wednesday month. Uh, so. No Stitch Hour tonight because we're doing a podcast this week, and then next week there will not be a podcast, but there will be a Stitch Hour. Right. And and the Sunday the Sunday guest shows those continue. Uh, those uh, no change there whatsoever. Those continue, but uh, the Wednesdays are the ones that are the change, and that was to uh, take some of the load off of producing three shows a week, but also. <laughs> was going to free up some time. And then every time Beth and I talk, we'd come up with ideas for other things to do. So um, yeah, true. that's the problem. You always have ideas. Yeah. So uh, uh, keep an eye out for new, new ideas coming. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. We, we've cooked up a couple here, so I think we'll have uh, some new stuff on top, which mm. will eliminate the time savings, but you know, yeah, well, we can, finagle something right yep it'll work <laughs> yep uh so that's our new schedule so no stitch hour tonight now sunday uh i had promised before the computer thing blew up on me that we would have a video with uh, allison cole and her husband steve uh and that that but that takes a minute i got to get that video together um so it takes a minute so um uh, and, and of course I got this mag, I got a magazine that's got to get to the printer. So, um, we'll hold off on that one for, for a couple of weeks. And this Sunday we'll have, our guest will be Ann Brooke and her business is handmade by Ann. Oh yeah. That yeah. was a fun interview. And I, it was just great talking to her because I didn't realize I f had been following her forever on Instagram. I didn't I they didn't quite make the connection until started doing research on her. Interesting lady making tags. That was so much fun talking to her about that stuff. Yeah. 
And and I'm I'm going to vote for best workspace in the world so far. Yeah, that was really nice. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, she was a treat. So join us Sunday for that, and then we'll be back on our regular schedule. Um, I went to. Uh, got invited to the show me. I knew I I didn't write it down, so it's show me <laughs> something. Show me uh, stitchers. E- show me stitchers. So. Yeah, you know. You know more than I do. Um, the uh, St. Louis area EGA chapter. And so I went last Tuesday. Boy, I had a, a great group of ladies. Really had a good time. Uh, they're very active, doing all kinds of things. And uh, so had a had a real nice time um, with them. And I, I have to see... You know, I'm a member at large of EGA, but uh, I think I might join them. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 having a local membership, like we're we're going to be holding a workshop, and we always offer that first to our members. Um, yeah. It, it um, group correspondence courses. There's sometimes there's something being offered. It's fun to take it with another group of people instead of just doing it on your own, which you can do. But yeah, yeah. join your local guild. Yeah, I think I, I think I will. There was a reason I brought that up, and that slipped my mind, but that's okay because I wanted to talk about them anyway. Um, just had a great time with them. Um, really nice bunch of ladies and, uh, boy, really active, all kinds of things going on. One of the cool things they did, okay, here's, here's, here's a whip, in, an interesting whip approach. So they went around the room, and people brought in, this, uh, apparently this is the first meeting of the year kind of thing brought in projects that had been languishing or, you know, were in the whip pile in one way or another. Okay. And so you brought in two or three, whatever you wanted, but most people had a couple or three. And then you showed them, and they couldn't be any more than half finished. Okay, that was kind of the rule. It couldn't be any more than half finished. And you showed them, and then the group voted on which one you were challenged to finish in the year. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, at the end of the year, I'm sure that well, I, I say, of course, like I know, I assume at the end of the year that then if you met the challenge, you showed off that you'd finish the piece, or if you were an utter failure, then you had to admit it to the group. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. But, uh, and, uh, Generally, that's how it goes. And and depending on the guild, like we've done it, where we've put in, you know, to get some skin in the game, as we've said, you had to, you, you put in $10 or $5, you got your money back if you finished your piece. But if you didn't, that was a donation to the guild. Oh. <laughs> oh, that'll put a little pressure on. Yeah, put a little, I mean, I mean come on, five, 10 bucks, it's not going right. to break you. But it did. It it motivated quite a few people to get their pieces done. Wow, that's cool. Now I don't know if they did that because I was, you know, I was all new to me. But yeah, that was a new one for me. I thought that was a cool thing. But yeah, if I got ten bucks in it, yeah, I want my ten bucks back if I can. Yeah, right, right. It it's just a little motivator, and then um, and it's fun to have somebody else pick what you're going to finish for the year. Yeah. Um, it kind of it, it it adds a different twist because maybe what they pick, you wouldn't have picked, but then you, you're you have a little bit more incentive of group motivation, um, you know, to to right. get something done out yeah. of that whip pile. Yeah. It didn't help me. I I lost my ten dollars <laughs> and didn't get my finish. So. <laughs> there must be. I think they did. If I recall correctly, they have like in July. They have kind of a mid-year check-in. Mm-hmm. Um, did you do that? Yes. Yeah, we did something similar to that because we always have a July picnic, and we always, you know, ask people to bring it in or show it. Where yeah. are you? Or yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was that was that was fun. Except I always I I never finish my piece. I can still um yeah, it's still in my whip pile. In fact. <clears throat> Well, yeah, once once you had to give up your ten bucks, then okay, that just goes to the bottom of the pile. Skip that noise. Because I was just so mad about it. You yeah. know, I was like, why didn't you guys get this piece? Yep. <laughs> uh so that was pretty cool. So anyway, yeah, I had a good time at that. 
that was that was fun. So that uh, yeah, I, and I didn't think I would join uh, another organization where I had to go to a monthly meeting, but uh, really enjoyed that. And it it's all of three miles from my house too, so um, <laughs> I can't use that excuse. But uh, yeah, I really just enjoyed, really appreciated them inviting me and uh, enjoyed the evening with them. So um, it was nice. Yep. Yep. For you. Um, Needlepoint right. Now. Now we're trying to get, uh, we've got new owners at Needlepoint Now. Um, and we're trying to get a scheduled time where we can interview them and learn what their plans are. But now you picked up the new, uh, the new issue that the first it must be the first one with the new owners, right? Yes. Um, I used to subscribe, um, but what drew me back in was the, they've got a huge um, wreath project they're going to run over the year, which has different um, stitch patterns for each of the leaves. And then they were co collaborating with different shops to, for, to gather the canvases and the threads, which I thought was a great collaboration with, um, you know, you can stitch it from stash. There's, you know, they encourage that. Um, but they also said, Hey, if you, you know, here's some local shops that are going to supply, um, have some supplies. Um, and I thought that was neat. Um, I thought that was a great marketing tool and helpful for the needlepoint industry, you know, support your local shop, um, you know, support the magazine. It, it's, it was, I thought it was good all around. Yeah. Um, but again, they've got great ads. That was one of the reasons I stopped getting the old one is I loved the ads and it was very tempting to look at the ads in the needle point now magazine. And I was like, Oh, I need that canvas. Oh, I need that canvas. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I don't need that canvas. So, um, so, but yeah, the, they're beautiful. Um, and, and again, it's just, it's, I think it's a well-written, um, Tony Manera, um, is one of their, um, writes one of their articles for them. Uh -huh. um, and it's called Tony's Take Technique. And, um, you know, he's quite the, um, what would you call him? Needlepoint. Everybody, Tony's Tony's known for his stitch guides and his um, um, his ability to teach um, different things. His canvas, the people that I I know people who've gotten canvases from him, stitch guides, and they're just phenomenal. Yeah. So I was curious to see that too. So he's I, writing I, a regular I, column for them. Yeah, correct. So um, I was curious about that because I I doubt I'll ever be able to get a class with him. Yeah. And I thought, oh. There's a way to get information from Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious about yeah, this, wreath, this wreath thing because, uh, see, I, I used to subscribe to and I quit. I just felt like I, all I was getting was painted canvas, stitch guides, and painted canvas. I just, I just felt like it was always so painted canvas heavy that it just wasn't worth it to me. Um, and so I quit getting it. And um, But, yeah, I'm most curious now um, – with this new ownership, if they have some direction change and, um, well, and, and these leaves. Okay. So, um, on Instagram, um, I think it's, Oh, I should know the stitch, um, stitch in a garden in Illinois. I'm not sure. I should know that, but she's a shop up in, in the Chicago area. Stitcher's garden. And she was, yeah. and, um, she posted that she was going to do these leaves and I thought, how is she going to have time to do the leaves? Well, she is not doing the leaf shape because that is going to require – it'll require compensation um, to make the, do the leaf shape, you know, mm -hmm. on the stitches. She's making a little sampler of squares. Oh. Um, and I thought, oh, well, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, what do you need? You need a canvas. You can tack it up and um, even if you didn't um, – you didn't want to do it all in one big, huge canvas because there's a lot of leaves. I can't remember how many leaves are in the wreath, um, but have all that. It'd be great to have as a as a sampler later. Yeah. With all those stitches and the stitch guide is looks very well done, and the leaves they give you the finishing instructions on how to fin physically finish those leaves into the leaf shape in the magazine. Uh huh. Which I. Th so then you don't have to go to a finisher. If you're brave enough, you can 
finish them yourself. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the, the picture of the wreath that comes out of that, it's quite stunning. Mm -hmm. it, is. it is. And it, and it is what got me to um, resubscribe because I thought, Oh, I like that leaf. I actually have, a, I have a place I could hang that wreath <laughs> if I ever got it stitched. <laughs> yeah. So what they're so, doing this, uh, um, in several issues then throughout the year. Okay. Um, I think they're going to take a year to do it. Um, I didn't, I didn't read that part of it. No, oh, that's all right. Yeah. So, so even if I don't subscribe, I need to buy a year's worth of issues to have that. Cause that's, that's quite a project. That'd be a good project to have. Yeah. And, and I think the, um, I think to just have the the stitch guides with all those different ways to make the leaves is interesting. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is there is at least one piece in here um, that is not that's not a painted canvas. It's a it's kind of like a white work piece on on canvas. Uh huh. And it's just the pattern for that. So it, you know basic supplies and, and a piece of canvas. So, which I thought was nice too. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Now I see, I may have to buy it. So, so there's, there's more than just painted canvas in there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it, it is still mainly painted canvas. I think there's, um, a lot of painted canvas in here, but as my friends will, would say, is they have good stitch guides. If there's a good stitch guide, you, you keep them so you can look at the and get ideas for um, other pieces. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be interesting because uh, uh, I've been involved a, a couple of times, uh, once in starting a magazine, uh, well, both, both times in acquisitions. And uh, it isn't really the first issue where you get to see what the new people are going to do. It's the second, third, and fourth, because typically in an acquisition, the, issue, the first issue is already, because you, you work so far ahead, the first issue is already in the works before you acquire the magazine. So you, you, know, you produce what's already been put in place and go from there. So as that stuff from the old owners gets worked through then you know the new people then start to be able to put in their own things and so it'll be interesting in the next two or three issues to see what um what shows up and then if, if we can get scheduled so we can talk to them then obviously we'll get an idea of of where they're headed with this magazine because i mean it'd, it'd be great if that uh, you know I mean, it's just my right. own personal bias, but it'd just be great if it offered more than just painted canvas because I just always felt like I was just getting uh, that, and I just didn't have that much interest. So, um, and and I and I like it. it there's so few needlepoint magazines out. I don't. Right. I can't. I can't think of another. You know. I mean, there just isn't. There aren't. There's a lot of cross stitch. Yeah. So it's kind of nice that this there that this is still there for people to use um, and, and to look at, to get ideas. Right. Well, yeah, because I think the only other one is A&G's uh, member magazine, right? That's the only one well, I know of other than Needlepoint Now. No, it, 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 I'm hoping that it would be interesting to talk, to, if we can schedule something to talk with them about it. Yeah. With, um, and see well, what's going. We'll try and certainly yeah. wish them the best of luck, uh, in the magazine world, it's um, it can be challenging, but um, I mean, magazine publishing these days is a very tough business. But Inspirations is is a shining example of put good content between the covers, and people will buy it, and they'll buy it consistently, and uh, um, you know, so if they can deliver that, and you know, I I mean, for a large part of the Needlepoint community, I mean, Needlepoint now was the magazine to have. Uh, just didn't fit my interests, so. Um, yeah. Right, and 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 I think they did um, when they moved mainly to um, stitch guides. It did you did lose they did lose quite a few people. So hope we'll see where this where they're moving now because it'll be yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, because it would be really great to have a, a, a needlepoint magazine that offers you know a variety of things, and uh, so right. yeah. 
Hope yeah. that happens. Yay. Absolutely. Opportunity Absolutely. there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you move your canvas from your stretcher bars if you're not going to be stitching on it for a while? Nope, unless I need the bars. Nope, I'll leave it right on there. <laughs> so if you need the bars, though, um, is it? does that mean you've abandoned that piece or you're planning on going back to it eventually, but you just need the bars and so you take it off? until you, you go back to the old piece? 99% of the time it's the squirrel factor. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I have a project that I want to do because, you know, squirrel, and yep. uh, uh, I don't have any spare bars of that size, so then I'll take something off and use it that way. But no, that doesn't mean I abandon the project. It just means that something else, <laughs> something else is shinier at the moment. <laughs> All right. I was just wondering. So, do you have multiple of the same stretcher bar sizes? Like, like you do a lot of, like if I do a lot, because I do a lot of Gay Ann pieces, I generally need like her, she goes through 12 inch, 14 inch stretcher bars. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I don't really like the normal stretcher bars anymore. I've gotten kind of picky about that. So, do you have multiple of like Evertights in that size? A size like you use a lot, or you just have one set of bars. Um, I have uh, in some of those more common twelve inch whatever. I have two or three sets. Yeah, I have yeah. to admit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was just I was just wondering because it's like I have multiple of the cheapy ones, and they're they're actually they're taking up space and they're driving me bonkers because I don't like them. And I found a I was going to frame something up to start it. And my stretcher bars were warped. Yeah. And it, and it, I mean, it, it, it just sucked all the joy out of it. And I was like, well, this is terrible. And I'm thinking, so I've, I've ordered a few adjust to frames. They have not arrived yet. Um, no. But I was just wondering, you know, do you just remove things, you know, if the squirrel factor hits, or do you have just have multiple of that size, a size you use a lot of? So now I don't feel so guilty. No, actually, right now, and these are the ones that are not in drawers. It looks like there's eight. Yeah, I think there's eight, uh, if I can just eyeball it over in the corner, eight that have projects on them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's some more in the drawer. I know there is. So, yeah, no, I'm I'm just as bad as you. Yeah. I feel better. I feel better. Yeah, and I, and I counted. I went through, and, and, and it, there might be a couple more that I didn't white find in my looking for my whips but mm -hmm. i found 31 31 I, whips yeah that includes some small ones but there's 30 there were 31 yeah i can't i can't comment because i haven't counted mine and i'm betting if i said something really snarky and then went and counted <laughs> mine i'd be at 30 so i can't say anything <laughs> <laughs> well, well, counting them, I needed to do that. I, I it was just kind of bugging me because I was wondering how many do I really have? How many? How many are floating around here that I want to work on that I haven't totally abandoned? And, yeah. and it just made me think. Okay, I need to get something done before I start anything <laughs> new. And so yeah. far, I haven't started anything new. It's all been from that pile of whips. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, see, I did not start. I did not start anything new at the January one. I um, mm -hmm. I took stock and I said no. Because, um, see, that's interesting. All right, so let me just share. You know, I've talked numerous times about changing my stitching, whatever, so I actually do stitching. And so January, I was determined that I was going to do at least some stitching every day. And I'm pretty proud to say that I've only missed one day so far in January. And many days I have I have done several hours. And so I feel like it, and and it's it's kind of cool because I uh, I think I said to you the other day that I've done more in January than I did in the entire fourth quarter of last year. And uh so you know that it and it's fun. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, 
What? It's, it's our hobby. It's what we like to do. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so that part has worked out well. But all of the work that I have done has been on this banding sampler because I can see the end of it. Right. So when you get to when you get to a, a, that point where you can say I can see this is going to be done if I just focus on it, you focus on one piece. Okay, uh, that's what I'm doing at the moment, and generally <laughs> I will do that. I will just you know nose to the grindstone, head home with it, you know. But uh, um, we're recording this Monday, so Sunday I spent. You know, three football games, three playoff football games. I stitched the entire time. And I have to say that uh, in the evening, about halftime of the evening game, it's like I'm really getting tired of making little X's over one. And uh, so I think that uh, I'm going to finish the band that I'm on right now, and then I think that's going to get set aside because – X's are, you know, at some point, I just can't make any more X's. And uh, and it's going to be uh, off to uh, county canvas work of some kind or, you know, something else. Um, but it, but then uh, I, I am, I, I kind of got focused. I just got focused on this thing, and I wouldn't let up. And, uh, and, and I did, a, I posted a picture of a big flower pot uh, roses that I did that is a bigger motif on the thing and i just you know i just kind of got into it and i was not gonna stop till i got done um so i i did that but but i am uh the the serapar the big serapar sampler that's two-thirds done that's going to get set up i've uh actually in the next couple of days that is actually going to get set up because i'm going to finish that because there's another one that i can see the end and i just need to to grind it out but uh, uh, my plan, and, and this is, okay, so this is where I get into trouble, and this is an embarrassment of riches is what this is, is my plan is to have that sampler set up and then have some kind of a, a needlepoint piece or some other technique going. Right. And so it was going to be the Lady Mary thing, but then now arrived the other day uh, one of Gay Ann's hearts. Oh, Arrived. Arrived. Yes. <laughs> um, and so you open that up and you go, oh, man. Okay. Now. Yeah, no. Okay. Let's, let's talk about this for a minute because I'm working on Betsy Ross needle paste. Yeah. And it's on a small canvas. Well, the piece I'm working on is on a small canvas. I think there's three more pieces of canvas that need to be loaded up and stitched. It, it has a lot of tent stitched in the background or so I would read it <laughs> and check. Yeah. Well, I haven't, yeah, I, I just opened it. And so, yeah, I got to read it and see, cause uh, yeah, she'll have you do an awful lot of tent stitch, but um, that's all right. You know? Yeah. So, so that one is tempting me, but the Lady Mary one is, you know, man, I just really want to do that one. So, um, I don't know. And and I, I'm I think I have a little bit of ADHD or something because I normally work on between two and four projects in a in an evening or a day. Um, and I I too I get tired of making little X's and I'm like I and I and I love making little X's but after a while I find myself oh well let's go look on Instagram let's see what's happening on Facebook yeah. let's and I'm like wait wait I'm not stitching I'm wasting time w- why let's let's pull something else out maybe it'll you know occupy my brain for a little bit and keep me going but um, yeah I when you were talking about Gay Ann's piece though. Um, I'm working on this Betsy Ross um, needle case, and I can only work on that for so long right now because the background, you do a background stitch on one section in, in blue, tent stitch, which is fine. I got that done. And then you add, of course, the next layer, which is a blue diagonal stitch and then a, a tent stitch with fry neck. Uh-huh. And there's a little note here, and it reads. I'm not going to read the um, the person. The person who did the proofing said, 
uh, recommended you work the tent stitches first and then work the silk background. Um, I worked the pattern the way I wrote it, but Pat said she almost tore her hair out. Oh, I said her name. Um, <laughs> anyway, but I was like, oh, it can't be that hard. I read that. I was like, oh, I'll just do it. it. It can't be that. Oh, no. I am. I understand what Pat was saying. Pat I'm was writing, right. <laughs> Pat was I'm pulling my hair out. When in but, doubt, listen to um, Pat. <laughs> Now you got me curious. I got I to get the chart now to see how much tent stitch she's got in this thing. <laughs> the tent stitch that's hard. It's the it's the layer over it because you're doing a it, it's the same color of thread. Right. So you're trying to count something and lay it on top. Yeah. And then you have I and this section has little motifs that you're you're working around this background stitch around it, and it's not easy to compensate. So anyway, it's 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 a nice brain challenge. And so I, I remind myself, this is good for your brain, Beth. You know, you're doing <laughs> compensating. Compensating is good for your brain. So, and it's going to be beautiful, but it's taking more time than I. I mean, we're talking like maybe a three inch rectangle ish yeah. size. Yeah. It's big, but it's going to take me at least three nights to get the background in because I can't work on it for very long. Okay. And I've already worked on that background because it had tent stitch in it for at least three nights. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not seeing. You have to do this nun stitch around the outside to define the out. heart shape. That'll take you a while. First row of padded diagonal. No, I'm not seeing a layer of. Okay, which heart do you have? I have the ruby and emerald jeweled heart. Hmm. So, padded, more padded diagonal tent stitch. I got a feeling I'm going to be doing some padded diagonal tent stitch, a lot of it. That's fast. That's kind of fun, in fact, yeah. I think, because I like the diagonal. But this isn't very big. I mean, it's, you know, it's an ornament, so. Yeah, it'll just take you a few days, Gary. Whip yeah, it out. Snap that out, no problem. Yeah, I better. I gotta read it. Well. Get it. Get it done for Valentine's Day and give right. it to Marga. Right. I better read the instructions. <laughs> so, but it's you know in the bigger picture, it's okay. I I am intent. I'm I'm just going to have at least two projects that I'm working on simultaneously. Um, I know the one is that sampler so then what is the second and that's where i i've had a pile of things out more than once and say all right which is it going to be and then uh coming to me from sassy jack stitchery is the uh rest of the thread i need to do port to fet which is more x's which you know i i don't know if i want to do that right now um but right. and, and and what kind are you going to do it on are you doing it on the 53, 63 sycamore seed pod? Yes. Yeah, yes. see, that's, I only work that in the morning when my eyes are fresh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to want to work on that when you're tired. Right. So, okay, so see, that's my problem. It's not a problem. You know, come on. I mean, I've got, no. the problem is I got too many things and I got to make a decision. So I got to decide what I'm going to do. And then I ordered, Karen Klu Kluba's, what is it, Blue Rhapsody? I did. That new one, yeah. Why in it? I ordered that from Kim. And the reason I ordered that from Kim is because I've had sitting here a hank of NPI Silk 747, which is a very nice dark blue. It almost has a hint of a purple in it, it looks like. But anyway, French Blue Range. But I've got a full hank, 45 meters by 8 ply. And when I saw that blue Rhapsody Karen Kluba one, and I saw this hank of thread. Oh, so all you need is a big piece of fabric and away you go. That's right. So, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah, and, 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 okay, so I don't know if anybody watched her last night, but Kim was on doing a live show, um, and she showed her 
she showed AC Bluebird, which oh. I have the chart for. And she said, oh, you know, we could, you could do this as a band sampler. And I thought, ooh, wouldn't that be pretty? Where you did, you know, because it's got the half motifs. But instead of doing the half, you know, it's just, you could, you could do the chart. And she's going to make a flip chart of, of the full motifs. Oh, is she? Yes. Um, she thinks she'll there. Allie's working on it now. But you do all those motifs on a band sampler going down. And I thought, ooh, that would be pretty. Now, okay, so it's, okay, I joined that show at uh, the top of the hour, but uh, football. So, yeah. I, you know, 30 minutes and then I, I left. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, playoff football, sorry. Um, don't take it personal, Kim. Um, okay, so that sampler, all right, that's an interesting thing because I, I frankly – I, I like the sampler, but I really don't like it, and I certainly don't like it enough to stitch it. But when you said making a band sampler out of it, that changes the game completely. And and I know it's it's um, the colors on it are pretty. Um, I I was watching the Sunshine Stitchers, and I think her name is Shelia. She's been working on it, and she has the colors that Kim has. I think the um, or, and and it's very pretty, very vibrant um, colors, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful sampler stitched up, and so I think it'd be fun to do it in the called for colors. And then they were discussing, well, Kim said last night something about doing it in hundred threes, mm. which would be, now that would be pretty because yeah. I like working with those. And I thought, oh. Too many temptations. Yeah. But see that, you know, that's something to keep in mind really for a lot of samplers is to make band samplers out of them. Right. Or, you know, not even do the, or, or you don't have to do the whole thing. Right. Um, do, do just a section of it. Yeah. And, and I, I think the, what, I don't like about the sampler when I look at the cover picture is all the color changes. That just, it's like, I really don't want to do all those, but I have, I have a hank, hank of thread or <laughs> more than one. Just one. <laughs> just one. Yeah. yeah. Just one. Mm, one of every color um, <laughs> of silks for you. Um, and that would be pretty to do it in one of those, of mm -hmm. the slightly variegated Um and that would be it would make it easier because you're not doing all the color changes. You're just going to town with one thread. Right. Right. Squirrel. Yeah. Squirrel is exactly right. Yeah. No, this and here I'm sitting here as you're talking, playing with this hank of Oh, of MPI. Dark oh, blue yeah. NPI silk is like, oh man. Yeah. Cause see, okay, yeah, so so that's where I'm at is I gotta I gotta just say, all right, I'm doing this. And, um, uh, yeah. Um, and then, then sitting out there is the, um, setting up a slate frame because yes. I have that Kathy Andrews pineapple and I have the cloth all set up to go on a slate frame, but then, you know, that project and I would like to do that pineapple, but I got to get us, I got to learn how to set up a slate frame. And, and I think, I really, really think that from what people have said, that you're going to love the tension you get on a slate frame. And once you do that, it's yep. almost going to be like you're never going to turn back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. Yeah. So I got to do that too. Um, but right now, yeah. I, my focus is I am going to stitch every day that it's possible, every day. Um I just, I'm, I'm just determined because I just got so far away from that and, um, got to do it. Got to do it. Yep. And I, I find it relaxing. I mean, I, it's, it's for me, it's the end of the day, even if I only have a couple of minutes and I put in one thread in one piece and that's all I get done. Yep. At least I did that much. And I feel, I do feel better very rarely anymore. Do I miss a day? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta that that I am determined to do and and develop the habit so that it it continues. Yeah, I got I got to do that. 
So what is this, uh, your, all the noise you're making about your, your Hade project? <laughs> well, what, what has gotten that out of the back room? Well, what happened was my son came home and he saw the painted canvas and he said, what about that other one? Do you know the Escher reptiles? He goes, I really liked that one. And then my husband even mentioned it. Um, we were looking at my painted canvas and discussing that I really needed to rip out the head that I did because it's not right. And he goes, you know, what? I really like that Escher, that cross-stitch Escher one you're doing. And I'm like, I abandoned that one. Um, <laughs> so I brought it back up. And it is making lots of little X's. Um, it doesn't have a lot of colors. I'm going to say it has maybe 16 grays, you know, in it and a uh -huh. white. Anyway, so it's not that difficult. It doesn't have that much confetti. And I just started working on it. And I thought, if I do 500 stitches a month, how long will it take me to get done? Uh, so I had my... One of my engineers calculate that. I said, well, how long will that take? He says, 33 years, Mom. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like well, that's not my What's lifetime. your hurry? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I can't think of it that way then. I can't think of it, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> So as you now know that if you do 500 stitches a month on a hay, you know, it, you have to be very young. And I wouldn't buy more than one, right? <laughs> and then and then some smart aleck friend made the comment. She said, well, if you do 1,000 a month, it'll take half as long, Beth. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. great. So that's almost 15, helpful. <laughs> it'll just take 15 years. Yeah. Oh, God, thanks. Man. Holy <laughs> smokes. That's humbling, isn't it? So these people that get thousands of stitches in a day on their hade, I'm just I'm just struck in awe because I can't get that many. If I get a hundred to two hundred in, I'm I'm moving along. Yeah. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna keep working on it. People obviously in my household like it, and um, if I don't work on it, it's never gonna get done. Right. So I I. I did 500 stitches at the beginning of the month and then I put it away for a while and worked on something else. And then I, I brought it back up again. Um, I'm going to work on it this week and then it'll, it'll go away for a while, but I'm just going to try to do keep at least do 500 stitches a month. That's my minimum. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. yeah Cause thing. you started making noise about that. And my first thought was, I thought that thing was basically in the trash and it, it, I was getting ready to cut the stuff I'd done on it, cut it off and reuse the material until people started <laughs> commenting. <laughs> Where's that piece? We like that one. I was oh, like, oh. oh. You'll see it when, I, when I'm 90 and I'm like, oh, where's yeah. the little spot? Yeah. Oh, anyway. Uh, I admire people who do those, but you'd never see me even know. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. And, and I did have a I said, I said, I told her, I said, one reason I abandoned it is I, I there's a mistake. There's like, I missed a l whole row or I did something. She goes, no one's going to see it, Beth. <laughs> Just keep going. And that encouraged me because she's, she's actually worked on a couple and she is amazing. She works on them in hand in a hoop. I mean, the whole big cloth in a small four inch hoop. Oh, uh huh. And she, I think she's finished at least one. Wow. So, yeah, that's so and it's not the only, <laughs> and that's not the only thing she works on. So, yeah, she goes, oh, just just keep going, Beth. No one will see it. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> It'll be thirty three <laughs> years from now, and then no one's <laughs> the eyesight yeah. will be gone, so it won't matter anyway. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That, but but maybe maybe I'll get it done one of these days, or or one of the the child that likes it um, can take it over. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so are you so okay so with all of this are you going to keep like counting all your whips and everything are you going to keep some kind of a formal uh, uh record or tracking um because you're on a mission to get things done or were you just I, counting whips just to see where you're at actually i'm i'm really not going to allow myself 
to start a new project until something gets done. And then it has to be in that same sort of category because if I re if I start something. So um, a Mill Hill bead kit, I've got at least three that are started. I've got to get at least one of those done before I start a new Mill Hill bead kit. Mm -hmm. um, just because I just can't have all these whips laying around. So I'm not going to start a new Gay Ann Rogers piece another until I finish one of the ones I have. And mm. I've got at least three of hers started. Three? Only three? Yeah, only three. <laughs> I finished the other one. So maybe four. Yeah. I, one of them I one of them I want is it's the white work sampler. There's a, a doodle doodle sampler and the regular sampler. And I've got both of them going. And sometimes I count them as one and sometimes I count them as two. So oh, okay. And they're very close to being done. I mean, it's 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 terrible that they haven't just pulled them out and finished them. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. okay. I'm not gonna keep track, no, but I am I am determined to keep stitching every day and uh I, I gotta yeah. I just need to get that habit. You know, it's a habit thing. I just kind of need to get the habit going. And, um, and yeah, and, and I think it it is good for us. I think that um, it it's calming. But even looking at that leaf um, project at Needlepoint now and thinking, oh, I, I really shouldn't start that because you know I don't have time. But it did make me think about well, what do I have that I it has a lot of compensation on it because that is good for your brain to figure yeah. out because you got to, oh, yeah. you got to, you got to do some, you know, mental tracking there. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, it's good for us. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm just going to get a couple projects out here and make a decision and go, you know, an interesting thing. I, uh, uh, when I ride on my bike on, on the trainer, uh, you know, there's, it's a video thing that I use to do rides. And so I have a big TV screen where I'm basically, I can, I'm following riding down a road, but then I always have my, uh, a tablet and I'll have, uh, I'll either have video game or not videos, uh, YouTube videos on there, or I'll listen to a uh, podcast or listen to a, an audio book. And so you know, occupying both sides of my brain. And lately, I tripped over, um, or it was suggested to me by YouTube, a guy called Vice, Vice Grip Garage. And it's this guy who has, I don't know, was he, was he a million and a half viewer or subscribers? Some ridiculous number of subscribers. But he's a, a, an auto mechanic. And so he, he goes and gets these cars many of them that have, have sat idle outside. Uh, one I watched the other day, it, uh, the guy had just pulled it into the, the uh, an empty lot in the woods. The, the, the brambles and stuff had grown up around it. It had been there 30 years. And he gets these things, and on site, he'll get them running. And the, the goal is to get them running and then drive from wherever he's at back to Nashville where he lives and, and he gets these cars barely safe enough to drive, you know, but it's amazing to watch him work. And I have no interest in become, becoming a car mechanic whatsoever, but it's interesting to watch him work and figure these things out. And he's like, he's in a field or he's in a parking lot or a driveway or who knows what, you know, but the interesting thing was he got to the end of one of these things and he was talking to the audience and he was talking about people getting to work on their car projects. And he said, even if you don't do very much, do something every day or every week so that you make some progress and you'll be amazed at how much you, how, you know, how far along you get. It was the same thing for these car enthusiasts that we talk about. And it just it just made me stop and go, oh man, everybody does the same. <laughs> well, and, and I think the I think a thing is, you know, we have these this wonderful device, um, our phones, 
They have mm -hmm. beautiful cameras. You don't have to take a, a perfect picture, but my taking a picture of Port of Fet once a week, maybe, or once every other week, showing me, I didn't really care about showing anybody else, but for me, seeing how much progress I made, even though some days I worked on it maybe 15 minutes a day. Now, sometimes I work on it an hour. Yeah. But I I, I think I'm about halfway done with that piece. And, it's, and it is just working on it just a little at a time. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, and I think taking the photo, what that does is it shows you your progress. So if you took a photo of whatever project you've decided you're going to work on besides the band sampler, and then a week and said, okay, I'm going to work on this every day this week, and then took another photo at the end of the week, it might give you more motivation mm -hmm. than if you just, you just do it. Yeah. Because then you'd see, hey, I've made progress. Yeah, I only had 10 minutes some days, but I made some progress on it. Got something. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Well, anyway. I'm feeling pretty good because I'm actually doing some stitching. So um, yeah. we'll take that. Yep. All right. That's going to be enough. It's good to be back doing these things again. Yeah. Um, no stitch hour tonight now. we got to get people in the habit of uh, no stitch hour tonight. We'll be here next week with Margaret Hagen will be the stitch hour. And then next week there will not be a Wednesday podcast. And then the Sunday show this week will be Ann Brooke. And, uh, yeah, she was so much fun. Um, mm. That was good. So yes. we have that. And, yeah, we'll keep stitching. Uh, if you're, you know, especially now with this new schedule where it's not the same thing every week, uh, subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and um, uh for the podcast, just get get the app, get an app, and subscribe, and then you won't miss out. And because uh, I had a couple of people say that they had signed on uh, last Wednesday for the Wednesday night show and it wasn't there, and you know, it's, you know I put up notices where I can, but subscribe and then then you'll be informed, and it it works out better that way. So, right. yeah. All right, that's it. Uh, Sunday and Brooke. Oh, yes, Margaret Hagen next week. Do not miss the live show next Wednesday night, um, yes. the 25th. Margaret Hagen will be our guest, and she's going to show us some of her samplers. Holy smokes. I know. I know. They're beautiful. You sent me photos, so, oh, man. you Yes. And, Absolutely. And, yeah, not your not your regular reproduction cross stitch samplers. Not even close. Whoa. No. Whoa. No. <laughs> We're just quite a variety. Quite yep. different. Whoa. <laughs> Very cool. Yep. Yes. Yep. So don't miss out uh, on that. Mark it on your calendar. Just subscribe, and then you'll get notified. It's easiest that way. All right, that's it. We're done. Thanks for listening.